Hi guys, so I'm here with Chantal and this is my next Reborn tutorial series. Um, Chantal is going to be painted with a slightly darker skin tone. You can tell that she has open eyes. Um, she is not going to be an ethnic skin tone, but she will be darker than my normal um, babies. She is actually a custom order. And her mom is very happy to see me using her in a tutorial series. Um, I'm using Genesis Heat Set Paint. If you guys want access to the full series as well as other full series, join my channel as a member. If you have not already joined, you can also support me by liking and subscribing. All right, so this kit um, is very shiny. You can see I've already done a prep layer on her and that is going to be in the kit prep video before this. This is the first painting video. So the very first thing that I'm going to do with Chantal is I am going to be doing veins. Um, this is my own vein mix color. I'm just going to add a little bit of this Exodus thinning medium. Um, I do have video a video showing how I mix my vein color for channel members if you have not already seen that and you would like to mix a vein color. Um, or there are several like pre-mixed vein colors available on the market as well. So I'm just mixing this up a little bit. This one has been sitting for a while. And I'm going to use this brush here. And we'll just go ahead and get right into veining. Um, I do just want to check. I'm going to start on the top of the head here. I just want to see if my vein color is light enough. And, okay, this is great for the head, but it's still a little bit too dark so I'm just going to add some more of that oil to it it had kind of thickened up because I haven't used this one in a really long time I use a couple different um, mixes this is what I normally vein with is this color on my light Caucasian babies. Um, this vein mix, which I actually forgot till I just opened it, is this with a small amount of Bountiful Babies pre-mixed vein blue in it. And this is what I use on my slightly darker um, complexion babies where their veins would not be as green, but they would be more of a blue. And that is just going to be my brush cleaning well. So let's just look at this again. All right, that is much better. And I know I've said this before, but a good rule of thumb, if you're not exactly sure if your veins are too dark, is before you bake, take a photo of your veins. If you can see your veins clearly in the photo, they are definitely too dark. Um, you want to be able to see them in person a little bit, um, but not to show up darkly in photos. If they're like really clear in photos, you're going to have a very hard time covering them up and getting them to look under the skin later. and I'm just pouncing really well. You want to make sure that the ends of your veins are pretty much not visible. Um, you don't want to be able to see where they start or where they stop. Um, you also want to pounce out a little bit in, in the middle. You don't want it to be a really dark line that you can very clearly see. Thank you. 
I'm not going to do much on the head. Um, this baby, her mom wants her to have a little bit thicker hair. She also wants it to be long enough to put in some little baby pigtails on the top. Um, so with that style of rooting, I re you really won't be able to see much on the actual head. So I'm just going to focus on areas that I can, you know, that will be visible. behind the ears coming out there and she has this great little sculpted area here I'll just do the vein coming down there and we'll do one more here that's a little bit wide I'm just gonna go ahead and run my sponge along it to thin it out a little bit all right, that looks good. While I'm doing veining, I'm also gonna go ahead and do my blue undertones. I'm just gonna add a little bit of thinner to that. This is ultramarine blue. And I do want it darker because it's for undertones. I'm going to go ahead and just do this in the corner of the eye here. And this is just a clean dry brush. I'm just going to pounce that in and kind of over on top of the nose there. This is mimicking thin skin. And also do a layer of this in the open eye crease. And I just want to pounce that really, really well. And kind of coming down into the under eye area. We're going to go around the crease of the nose and then straight down a little bit diagonal like so and just pounce that out again as well. And I'm just going to take a cosmetic wedge and I just, I don't want it on the actual nose. I just want it a little bit around and below. And we'll also do a little bit of this right in the philtrum there. And just a very small amount on the crease here. Um, I don't want to do too much blue on the lips. Normally I would do a blue lip layer. Um, this vinyl, I'm not sure how well you can see it on camera. It has a very gray-brown tone, um, so I definitely want to bring in some warmer colors. I'm not going to be adding too much blue onto this baby um, because I do not want like a dead skin tone look. Um, so it's going to be a balancing act because I do want the darker skin tone, but I definitely don't want it to be uh, too blue of a skin tone. Alright, so this baby has open eyes. What you can do as far as capillaries are a little bit more limited. 
um, this baby, even though she's only 20 inches, so she's, you know, a newborn size baby. I think her face looks a lot older than her size. Um, but the style her mom wants her painted in is definitely more of an older baby. So I'm not going to do too many capillaries, but we are going to do some, just enough for realism. Um, this is my favorite brush for capillaries. This is Christine Woolley's hand cut hair painting brush and you can get this at Dolls by Sandy. I'm just dipping this into some of that thinner. I just want it a tiny bit wet. Um, this is Bountiful Baby's pre-mixed white red um, which is similar to like a pie roll red with a touch of blue maybe Mars black in it. So I'm just uh, getting a tiny bit of paint here from the lid. I'm not actually dipping my brush into paint. And actually, before we do this, let's just do a little bit of blue in here. All right. So I'm just going to do some capillaries here on the inside of the ear. And I'm not pouncing over the whole thing, just the ends, just to barely blend the ends there. And I'm not going to do any on the eyelids. I don't think that would look natural at all. I am going to do a little bit here on the cheeks. With the darker skin tone, these won't be super noticeable, but you do want to still have that level of detail. So if someone looks very, very closely, um, you can just see it just adds to the depth later on. And we'll do the blue in here as well. That looks really nice. I'm really happy with that one. I like that one even more than this one. Let's see if I can just add a little to make this one better as well. Awesome. Okay. And you don't want your capillaries to be um, uniform. You just kind of want, you know. Some basic little squiggle areas. All right. And we'll go ahead and do our veining here on the arms. Um, I do have in the private members only Facebook group, I do have uh, charts and stuff for vein placement in in the guides in the for the supplemental materials. So I'm not going to go over, you know, you guys can see where I'm placing them, but I'm not going to, I guess, verbalize it too much. This one might be a little bit more fast paced than normal. I'm kind of assuming at this point you guys have watched um, at least a couple of my full series and already have that basic knowledge information. So I'm not, I don't want to have to, I don't want to repeat myself a bunch of times. You guys are like, I know, I know. <laughs> I 
going to do a little bit of this vein color right there between the um, fingers where veins would come together. We'll do a little vein here on the outside pinky finger and one on that finger as well. one here where the brachial artery would be. Alright, I'm gonna take this blue here and we're just gonna do a very thin kind of first uh, crease layer on these attached fingers or I always say that right fused fingers hopefully all the fingers are attached right <laughs> I do want to get the paint off the finger. Here there can be a little bit more shadow where those are together. this really tiny brush, I'm going to do um, some more of this veining here on the inside of the hand. We'll also just kind of put more in there in the center of the palm where there would be a little bit more shading and right here where there would be more veining but I'm not doing individual veins because there's a crease there and we'll do the same thing on this side where veining would kind of come together there. And we'll just hit those little creases, um, the dimples with it as well. All right. And I guess on this, we can just start here. And I basically just want to roll my cosmetic wedge on. I want to pounce it a little bit, but these veins are barely visible and it's going to have a lot on top of it. And we'll do our thumb veining there. This one just has that small fused on that finger.
do a little bit more of a vein here just because you can see it really nicely sculpted in. I just want to pounce these just a little bit better there. All right. So on the foot here, we're just going to do some shading here. This is a really veiny area on the foot, so I will do some more individual veins that you can actually see as well. Like outside of the big toe and the pinky toe. Some shading here. And under the ankle bone there, and under the ankle on this side. As well as the vein that runs right over the ankle bone itself. Behind the knees here, right where it hits that crease, is a really great spot for visible veins. You do want to blend them out, but if you can see any right there, it's a really good spot for it. And we'll just do a little shading there. here on the inside of the thigh. And our little um, crease there on the fused toes. good. Mm, actually, I like forgot for a second that I used this color. I definitely want them to match.
around it again, right below that ankle bone. Just do a little bit on the outside. And that sculpted vein that runs over the ankle bone. Um, this one, I'm just doing shading because um, you can't actually see um, this vein. Is, I mean, this leg is bent more. So there would be a little shading there, but it would not be the same as on the other leg as far as veining. of the thigh here and just where it would come up to the knee on the outside and we'll do one more here all right that looks good And these are my absolute favorite vein belly plates. Sorry, I had a hair on there. belly plates you can get away with your veining being a little bit darker they wouldn't be as visible on a darker skin tone baby as they would on a lighter one um, but you can still make them visible and I guess by visible this is what I mean um, you might be able to see them slightly in photos but um, it would not be something that you could see super dark in photos just a little bit um, darker than on the limbs This primer is really, really sticky. Really hoping this goes away after baking um, some layers on it. We'll just do a little bit of that uh, blue on the belly plate here, creases. I don't want to really emphasize those creases too much, but we will do a little bit of color in them. And I'm just going to mix some eyelid purple here.
and we'll just do a very first little nipple layer. Inside the ear and inside the nose on the philtrum and in the mouth and I guess we'll go ahead we'll do lips as well I'm just kind of taking the excess um, that I pounced off and just putting it right on the upper eyelids there. And we'll do our um, creases with this color as well. I just want to pounce that out with a clean dry wedge I mean wedge a brush sorry I did not sleep much at all last night Tate was up till 3 in the morning and then he got up at 5 I don't know what was going on with him but we had a rough night so it's gonna be a long day needless to say <laughs> just do these eye creases. I don't want to do too much with um, her eye creases in general. Her kit it looks a little bit harsh to me in the features when, when eyes are in and stuff. So I want to do what I can to really soften that and you can do that by not adding too much to them. Less is more for sure. Alright you guys, I'm going to bake these layers and then I'll be back for probably our first model. Alright, so I'm back and I am going to do a layer of Genesis Red. You guys probably know from watching other videos, normally I would add something to this to kind of cool it down. I'm not going to be doing that um, just because this vinyl is so cool already. I'm going to leave this, I'm going to water it down a little bit, not water it, but thin it a little bit more, but I do want it a little bit thicker right now. I had to change my whole thing. I had a major uh, fiasco with some paint that <laughs> went everywhere. All right, so I'm gonna do a layer on these lips. I definitely wanna use cool colors. I'll probably be doing like a salmon color as well on the lips. Um, it will be very, very easy for these lips to turn a brown color just because of the natural color of the vinyl. So I just want to watch that as I'm painting. And I'm going to do the inside of the lid lines, I guess we'll call them. We'll do the creases and inside the ear as well.
do a tiny bit in here, not too much. And we'll do around the nose as well. And I'm gonna do another purple inside the nose. And inside the ears where there would be like a little fake um, shadow to mimic an actual real ear canal. I'm gonna pretty much just do kind of areas that we would be blushing um, as well as creases. And I know it's super early generally for a first little blush layer. Um, I am really trying to just get some paint on this baby and try to get rid of this crazy, crazy sticky um, primer. And they have to get done anyways, so it doesn't really matter if I'm doing a first one right now or five layers from now. just see a little bit of paint settled in that crease that I just want to kind of pull up a little bit. Her hands are so nicely sculpted. They, um, I know it's totally different sculptor, but they really remind me, this hand especially, the detail level it really reminds me of the Ellie Sue kit by Bonnie Brown, who, I mean, I think she has the most amazing sculpted limbs out of any kit I've ever seen. Um, and these have that same exact level of detail, which is pretty amazing. And I'm kind of avoiding the nails. Um, a little bit will get onto the nails when I pounce, but um, I do, it's fine. But I don't want to do like a whole layer on the nails.
just doing pretty much the whole toes here. I want to make sure I get the top of the toes. And pretty much um, just the normal blushing areas on the foot here. And a tiny bit in those creases. And I'm just going to use my cosmetic wedge to pounce out the area, the inner center there that I don't want um, any blushing on. And I'm just going to take my smaller brush here and just make sure that I'm getting in the creases really well. Again, I just want to make sure that I'm getting those creases really well. I don't want any excess that we have to clean out later. And I might actually do, uh, not right the second, because this is going to be the end of the first video, but I might do a matte varnish layer on this um, baby 
this um oh, this primer it just I do not like the way that it feels it is I don't know if you guys can hear that it is super super sticky hair is getting like all over it and it is super slick and shiny it's almost like I'm painting on a waterproof surface um, I don't even know how to explain it but my paint is kind of just sliding around it's not going in properly the way that I need it to um, but we'll see how it does after we're getting after I get a little bit of paint on it I'm actually gonna use some of this oil um, this exodus thinning oil which is matte and can help shiny kits and areas that don't take paint well um, so maybe this will help me out a little bit. We'll see. I'll reassess after this layer, basically. Okay, that should be good. And I'm just going to use, um... The oldest modeling sponge that I have, which is my absolute favorite sponge. And I'm just going to do a regular model here. And this sponge has very small modeling holes so it's not like a real model for um, for a modeled pattern effect it is definitely like a depth layer sponge And I'm kind of going like on top. I'm doing it uh, really fine. I don't want to do a wash quite yet, but I really want to get most of this vinyl covered with this pattern so that I can see if it helps with this issue that I'm having. Gosh, I kind of, you know, it's been so long since I've painted with air dry. It's been many, many years. And this, that is exactly, I guess, what it seems like. It's like there's a barrier and the paint is just sitting on top. Um, if you haven't, if you have used air dry, you probably know what I mean when you're, you know, painting with air dry and it just kind of it's like beading on top of the vinyl it doesn't soak in the same way that heat set paint does um but it's something that's hard to explain but when you you've when you've used both you know exactly what i'm talking about um and that is really what this seems like to me Let me get a little bit more in that crease there. All right, 
that looks good. make sure that there's no little spots that I'm missing. Gosh, I don't even know where these little hairs are coming from or what they could possibly be from. This thing is like a lint and hair magnet right now, though. It is insane. I've never, ever had this happen to me before. I mean, obviously, occasionally you get a stray hair or something. This, though, is, like, out of control. Like, it's like silicone or something. It is just pulling them from the air and right to it. And there's another... All right, you guys, keep your fingers crossed that when I put this in the oven, um, that this layer is really going to get rid of that really sticky um, kind of paint-resistant layer. All right, so that is going to be the end of the first video. I'm going to go ahead and put um, this baby in the oven, and I'll let you know at the beginning of the next video if we're going to varnish or if we're just going to be able to keep painting. All right, you guys, I will see you in the next one.